So, hey guys, how you doing? Of course, just as soon as the live is starting, people decide they're going to do construction upstairs. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Welcome to the live broadcast. So, I guess, I take it since there's a bunch of us online now, that uh, you got the notification from YouTube. Now, it's not telling me how many people are online yet, but uh, we shall soon find out. So welcome to the show. Um, I don't know if you hear that drilling, but there's nothing I can do at this point in time. That's the, uh, the disadvantage of live, I suppose. So in this particular live, I found an interesting piece that I think would be kind of cool to go with. 53 Python interview questions. I'm going to just quickly go through a bunch of these once we see we've got enough people online. And then we'll do the Q&A, of course. So we got 43 people. Again, is that background noise so annoying that you can't hear me? Let me know. It's annoying the hell out of me. But um, you hear that drilling. I can't do anything about it. It just started literally three minutes ago. So I don't know where it's happening. Is this too annoying for you guys? Should I postpone this? You don't hear a thing. Oh, no, no, no. Same shirt step. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I was waiting for that. Just so you know, I have multiple copies of certain cool shirts. This is one of the cool shirts that I have. Multiple copies. Multiple copies. I was waiting for that, though. <laughs> greetings, greetings. How do you test your web projects? Do you have a dedicated QA team? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, but once a mature product is mature, um, it becomes less important in terms of having a dedicated team. So you guys don't hear any drilling. All right, fantastic. Uh, this mic is doing its job. Just in case you, this is called a dynamic mic. This is a broadcast mic. And the point of this mic is to only capture sound local to the mic. As you pull away, they're always drilling something. Yeah, no, I don't know what it is with the, with the construction here. Anyway, as you pull away from the mic, it gets quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter. That's the point. So hopefully the drilling is not so loud. Let me know if it's not so loud. All right. Yeah, right. Copies. Uh, can you hear drill? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I can hear the drill, but you're coming through loud and clear. Okay, good. So. This mic is doing its what it's supposed to do. Uh, hey, Steph, long-time watcher, first-time commentator. Great, vid, great vids. Thanks. Well, thanks, Tyson. I'm glad you like it. Are you Tyson from London or you're just Tyson London? Uh, greeting, greetings. Hello from Egypt. Hello, Karim. How are you? All right, so let's, uh, how are we doing? We've got 82 people. As soon as we hit 100, we usually get 150, 200, sometimes 300 people. I'm going to jump into the subject of the of the day. 53 Python interview questions and answers, something I found on Medium. We'll talk about this, and then we'll get into the Q&A. IDD, NYC. I can hear drilling, but I am using studio headphones, but who cares? All right. As long as the drilling is not drilling a hole through your head like it is me, then we're cool. Um, that's the, uh, the dangers of live, right? Yeah, all right. Thanks, thanks. Quality, the quality dev loves my channel. I appreciate that. Same guy, same clothes. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I had a different shirt. I had a different sweater on. Uh, same same uh, logo shirt. To be honest, Steph, you got that mic for ASMR. The new Studio Web ASMR YouTube channel is coming. Exactly. That was exactly my plan. All right, so... Uh, we got 95, five away, and then we're going to jump into the subject of the day. I've been to New York. Isn't it like that all the time? Well, I'm not in New York. I'm in Montreal. But it's kind of, Montreal is kind of, um, in a sense, it's kind of Canada's New York, you know. Thumbs up, guys. Good for Google stats and algorithms. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Please, thumbs up. If you thumbs up. More likely, but I'm going to uh, get more views, which means more likely I'll continue this whole uh, live stuff. All right, we're 92 and 95. What I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into the subject, and then uh, mm -hmm. 
we can get back to Q&A. So here we go. All right, let me just jump into it. All right, so Python question answer thing on Medium here, article on Medium. Let me zoom in. All right, so this guy, Chris, I've never seen this guy before, but I thought his questions were uh, interesting, and I'll get into it now. Okay, so not so long ago, I started a new role as a data scientist, which turned out to be a Python engineer in practice. I would have been more prepared if I brushed up on Python's thread lifecycle instead of, of, instead of recommender systems in advance. In that spirit, here are my Python job interview preparation questions and answers. Most data scientists write a lot of code, so this applies to both scientists and engineers. Whether, you, you, whether you're interviewing candidates, preparing to apply to jobs, or just brushing up on Python, I, this, I think this list will be valuable. One of the reasons I decided to cover this, guys, was because um, uh, in my Python course, I cover like 90% of these things. So I thought, hey, that makes sense. So let me just jump back into it. Okay, what is the difference between a list and a tuple? Again, list, list and tuples are uh, collection classes, collection types in Python. They're kind of like, they're types of arrays, if you will. I'm not gonna go into all the detail here. If you wanna learn all this stuff, um, you can do, you see a lot of my Python videos actually in the YouTube for free, or you can take the Python course if you want the full interactive experience. Anyway, how does, how is string interpolation performed? Now, I, would, I want you to pay attention to the, the nature of these questions. What is the difference between is and the, uh, the uh, comparative operator, double equals comparison operator? What is the decorator? You know, decorator is a design pattern. These are all pretty universal so far. Explain the range functions, the specific function, function Python, all basics, by the way. The, define a class name with car with two properties, color and speed, then create an instance and return speed. Again, basics, basics. What is the difference between instance, static, class method, and Python? Again, basics, basics, basics. What is the difference between func and func? Uh, explain how the map function works. Explain how to, re how to reduce function works. Again, all fundamentals, basics. Filter function works. Uh, does Python call by reference or by value? Again, uh, very, that has to do with um, uh, uh, object-oriented programming uh, and how it manages memory. Uh, Python, uh, how, a reverse how to reverse a list. Again, it's all basic stuff. How does string manipulation work? How does list man multiplication work? What does a self refer to in a class? Again, object-oriented basics. How can you concatenate lists in Python? So this is a guy, by the way. This is a guy who recently got a job coding in Python as a data scientist. Now look at the nature of the questions, right? Uh, what's the difference between a shallow copy and a deep copy? Uh, create a shallow copy original, create a deep copy. What is during the list and arrays? Uh, how, to con how to concatenate? Concatenate means to combine together two arrays. What do you like about Python? That was a question that was given to him. What is your favorite Python library? Again, they, they'll ask, you ask your, you're probably asking, why would they ask these kind of questions? What do you like about Python? What's your favorite library? This they're trying to discern how deep your knowledge is in Python. Uh, if you have an opinion about that, it would imply that you know a little bit more about Python than just some noob doing uh, tutorials. Uh, how would you round a number to three decimal places? How do you slice a list? Again, guys, if you don't know, this is all really what is pickling. These are all basics of Python. What is there between dictionaries and JSON? What ORMs have you used in Python? That's a little bit beyond basics, this one right here. That's about application development. An ORM is an object relational mapping framework. It's basically a layer of code, an ORM is. It is a layer of code that sits on top of a database, of a SQL database, a relational database. SQL database is a relational beta database. So ORM is a layer of code, in this case, layer of Python code, that allows you to interact with that database without using SQL. All the major languages have ORMs. Uh, it's just uh, a lot of programmers don't like writing SQL. And let's go back. Uh, how do any the any function, the all function work? Are dictionaries or lists faster for lookups? Again, this is like 
basics plus plus, not much more than basics. What's the difference between a module and a package? Basics again, how to increment, how to increment and decrement an integer in Python. How to return a binary of an integer? Again, pretty basic stuff. How to remove duplicate elements? How to check if a value exists? Anyway, I could go on. It's pretty much okay. A few more. How does class inherit from another Python? Uh, how, how does excuse me? How does a class inherit from another class in Python? I'll put a link to this article so you can take a look at all this stuff. How can you remove white space from a string? How would you enumerate? How would you use the enumerate function when iterating? On a sequence, what is the difference between pass, continue, and break? Uh, it's, it's all just basics, man. Convert the following for loop into a list comprehension. Uh, it's pretty much basics. Give an example of ternary operator. Check if a string only contains numbers. Uh, check. I'm just I'm just gonna continue through here. What is the difference between remove, del, pop? These are all just uh, array functionality. Uh, give an example of a dictionary comprehension. And how is exception handling performed in Python? Yeah, try, except finally. Uh, if you're in the Java world, this, uh, we use try, catch. Uh, there it has the conclusion. So what to take away from this big, long list of interview questions that this guy is telling you which you're going to have to answer or something similar based on his experience getting a Python job? Did you see any uh, talk about uh, algorithms or whether you, you use this framework or that framework? No, it's all about the basics. Always about the basics, guys. So that's uh, pretty much it. I cover about, I guess, 90%, 95% of what you see in this list and a lot of other things as well in my course. So when I saw that, I said, oh, there we go. The basics are the basics, and uh, it applies to all languages. You're going to see a variation of this, by the way, in this type of uh, questioning, uh, regardless of the language. You know, so that you're going to be asked about the Java equivalents of what they were talking about in, this, in these Python questions, or the JavaScript equivalents, or PHP equivalents, with some variation. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's just jump into a few questions now. Okay, okay. Let's see, we got, uh, well, let's, uh, we got some, a lot of questions here, a lot of questions. Woohoo. Um, trying to find a good one. Anybody know if a refactoring book, new edition, is any better? Well, a new edition of a refactoring book would be better than the previous edition. You get whatever edition you want, it's probably just minor updates. I'm telling you, if you want to know what that refactoring book is, let me show you here. Uh, focus. All right, so this is the classic refactoring book. There's, a, there's going to be a link below when this is um, archived uh, on YouTube. You'll be able to find it. Uh, this is the book. Once you know your basics, your fundamentals of coding, this is all Java, but this will teach you how to code in really much more effectively in any language. If you want to go from beginner, intermediate, once you get through with Studio Web, you're intermediate, beginning, intermediate. This will take you to beginner, advanced. This will teach you how to be a 10,000 times better coder. Much more important that you do the learnings in this book, if you will, than uh, doing a bunch of tutorials on how to use this framework or that framework. This is such a key book. Uh, that's it. If you're a total beginner to code and you like to read, you like books, you can check out my book here. This is about the web, though. Um, it will teach you HTML5, CSS, CSS and it will, more importantly, it will teach you the, the broader concepts about the web and web design. So there you go. Since somebody brought it up, uh, let's see what we got here. I would say it's a mental shock because learning program also means you change the way you think dramatically. Exactly. AC0011A has it 100%. It's about changing the way you think. More important than anything else. Once you get past that, uh, the rest comes easy. It's that way of thinking. Uh, let's see what Tech Boy has to say. As web design deals with aesthetics, user ability, psychological ramifications, so on and so forth. A web design deals with aesthetics, usability. Yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate, I would say. Uh, for example, uh, in um, in design, they've done uh, 
a great deal of analysis in psychology in terms of the impacts of color, red, blue, green, black, in terms of the psychology. So marketers know that certain colors are better for certain circumstances. So there's whole, there's books have been written on that. So color is, uh, is important, but there's some basic rules, right? Some basic rules. Um, first time to catch that live. Ah, good, good. Hello from Morocco. Hello from Canada. Nicola says, hello, Stefan. Hope you are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking. I hope you're doing all right as well. Okay, um, here we go. There we go. I don't hear a thing. Ah, there you go. That's good. Um, same shirt, Steph. <laughs> I think I got that. Greetings from Ukraine. How do you test your web projects? Do you have a dedicated... Hey, okay, I answered these ones before. All right. Mm, hey, uh, Happy Man Studios TV, long time fan. Thanks. I'm glad you like the material. I'm good. I'm good, everybody. Thanks for asking. Yeah, there's drilling in the background, but this mic might be dampening that off. Okay. Uh, okay, here's a good one. Hey, here. Here you find. Is that why you're moving? No, I'm moving because I want a different lifestyle. I live on the kind of the outskirts of the core of the city. Like I'm right beside the, the mountain, the park, and it's quite nice. I've been here a while. I was only meaning to stay here like a year or two. Uh, but I just ended up staying. But now I'm moving right like in the heart of the city. It would be equivalent of Times Square where I'm moving in Montreal. It's a totally different game. So, uh, okay, here we go. Rahu, noise is not annoying. You talk, your talks are interesting. Question, Python future and mobile dev according to you? I, I, I think you can't go wrong with Python overall. I'm not sure how big it's going to be in mobile. I don't think it's going to be huge in mobile, except maybe when you're doing, uh, when it's the back end of a PWA or the back end of a progress of a um, responsive website, perhaps. Excellent mobile is at an all-time low. Should I buy a few shares? <laughs> I can't give you trading advice because I'm not a professional trader. What I would say is that um, it's speculative, but if it's uh, at an all-time low, here's a general rule of investing. Uh, you pick the strongest company in a down market. So oil right now is taking it on the chin. It's really bad for oil right now. Um, so if you were to invest in the oil sector, oil is a sector. Fast foods is a sector. Computer technology is a sector. Anyway. If you were to invest in the oil sector, you want to invest in the strongest company in a weak, weak market. So Exxon is, as far as I know anyway, is the strongest and the biggest in the oil sector. They're very diversified. Doesn't mean it will be a winner, but chances are, if as the market is crashing, they're, they have a much greater chance of surviving. And as a smaller, weaker uh, competition in that market go bankrupt or fall away, their business will go into Exxon eventually. That's the, the theory anyway. But I can't say whether or not you should invest. You have to make that choice. I uh, invested uh, a year or two ago when I was at a five-year low. I was doing good for a while, but <laughs> it's, it's gotten slammed since. So, you know, but as usual, when you do invest, you put a very tiny, tiny part of your investment portfolio in any one bet because any investment in any company or market is a bet. So make sure that um, when you do so, you're, you don't put too much in so you don't, uh, so you can sleep at night. All right, Steph. Uh, okay, hold on. Steph, confounded startup with friends, three years now, no profit yet, per share vested 17% over two years. I want to leave do my own thing. What to do? What about equity? Is it fair? Is it tough? It's tough due to friendship. Oof, that's hard. Yeah. Persia. So you're telling me you can pull out 17%? You got 70%, 17% of your equity? What is what is the uh, the maturation? Did I forget the terminology for that. That's a tough, tough question. It'd be it's like uh Friends of mine with their company, uh, they had a guy who was in 
And then just like a year ago, he dropped out. And then like right after he dropped out and they tried to convince him to stay, uh, uh, huge players started investing in their business. It still doesn't mean whether or not they're going to be a huge success, but, uh, you know, you never know. It's a hard I don't have an answer because I don't know all the details about the situation. We don't know uh, when you're how. What's the structure? What is the agreement between you and the investors and so on? When do your shares vest? I think it is. Um, what is the minimum freelance hourly rate? Should we accept as well done designers and developers? What What's the concrete red line? There isn't any because it depends on your level of skill. It depends on where you happen to live. It depends on the difficulty in uh, the type of work that you're doing. Is it super common? Is it, uh, <laughs> could be, could be. It stopped now, by the way. The drilling has stopped. I paused a boring course to watch you, man. There, there you go. There you go. I'm, yeah, it's good to take a break once in a while. That's a good question. Freelancer versus contractor. Uh, freelancer, you get your clients, you set the stage about what projects you're going to build, how you're going to build it. When you build it, you usually work at your own office or at home. They don't dictate to you when you work or how you work. They don't, uh, there's no micromanaging, no management over your head in that regard. In terms of the, the actual code that you're writing. When you're a contractor, you're basically an employee, a temporary employee who's hired. You have to show up there at a certain time of day. You have to work there. You gotta, they'll tell you, you gotta do this. You might be hired. Like I, I was a contractor on a project for a huge company once. And my job was just to do, build the help system out. That's it. That's all I did, nothing else. And the, I was paid a, a daily rate. And there was in, in the contract was you're gonna work for X amount of days this is your daily rate, and that's it. And you just do whatever they throw at you. Whereas a freelancer is much more control over what you do. Not not being said, uh, you're still gonna have to uh, you're still gonna have to listen to their requirements, right? Because they're paying for the bills. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's go on here. Sup sup bud, love the channel. Thanks. All right. Subs with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I won't talk about that. All right. Greetings. Greetings from Mexico. Greetings from Canada. I knew it. I knew it that I put on this shirt and it, I said, you know, people are going to comment about my shirt. <laughs> That's the thing about going online, man. People comment. They notice everything. If your eyebrow is out of place, you got one hair on your eyebrow out of place. People go, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, though. It's all good. So I wonder, people have been asking me, play some drums. Problem is, since the COVID, people are here now. Now, when normal non-COVID situation, I'm in a corner unit here. I have no neighbors here and there, but I have neighbors here and there. And during the day, there's nobody. So I used to be able to play loud during the day, but now everybody's home, so I can't really play loud. So I'm going to put this. I don't know if you guys can hear this or not, but... Okay, enough of that. So you can find that on Instagram. Now you see me play drums live, kind of. <laughs> hello, hello from Pakistan. See, did I lose anybody there? All right. Um, let's see. Although I'm developing quite complex systems for my AAA game, but still I feel it's not complex enough. A kind of imposter syndrome not going away. Right. How shall I deal with that? Ah, it's interesting. You know what? You let the market decide, you know? I know how you feel. I, I used to develop, I remember I was developing a pretty complex system once. And uh, I always thought it was kind of basic, you know, but I always tend to write basic code. But people liked it. I had a whole bunch of members, a lot of people using it. And then when I had somebody who I, I considered a guru programmer relative to me at the time, he said, oh, that's, that's, that's some interesting code you got there in terms of it was complex stuff. 
the end result is all that matters, right? Not the complexity. Simplicity is a sign of skill. So as long as people like what you're, build, you're building, who cares how simple or complex it is, you know? Uh, look at uh, Mario Brothers, uh, you know, all the, all the uh, Nintendo games. Not exactly uh, super complex, right? But look how su super successful they are. Do you think that the industry will adopt a single programming language in the long term? Like a programming la language will be good for everything. I don't think so because... Um, it's like saying, will everybody have one type of vehicle? No, sometimes you want a Jeep, sometimes you want a sports car, sometimes you need a pickup, sometimes you need a plane, sometimes you need a helicopter. So, uh, you know, why not, uh, so the tech boy is answering CARM zeros. Why not, stick, why not stick to KISS and drive principles and keep things modular instead of monolithic, instead of trying to stick ideological, ideologically to a particular pattern? Yeah, that's, there's some sense to that. Um, I'm learning Python now, uh, right now, and I'm getting decent at it. I've been told in order to get into data sciences for a career path, especially at Google-sized companies, SQL is needed. I'm not a data scientist, but um, SQL to me is one of the key languages, one of the key technologies you have to learn as a developer overall, unless you're getting into maybe game coding or something. But it's good to know. Uh... Wish I could listen to this, but we'll have to later. Studying Java. All right. Nah, don't worry. It will be there for you to replay. Get to studying. Good old Java. I'm rearranging my, my comments here. Okay. Stefan, is it a good idea to sell a language course via cards on a website? Via cards. I don't know what you mean by that. Because you say... You send your courses, so no pages with restricted access to those who subscribe. I'm not sure what you mean by via cards, but uh, get back to me. How is the job market for Salesforce dev in Montreal? Don't know. I don't do Salesforce uh, coding. Um, I imagine it's decent. Uh, how one can invoice customers and handle income taxes from freelance work if he is not a formal business from a legal perspective, i.e. working nine to five jobs, freelancing on some spare time. It depends on where you live and what the local tax laws are in your area. So a bookkeeper should be able to tell you. Um, I can tell you that in Canada uh, and I believe in the U.S., it's actually pretty lax. You know, it's just income. And uh, if you're making, like in Canada, if you're making under a certain amount of money, you do not have to charge a VAT, a value-added tax. In Canada, we call it a GST, PST. Um, there you go. But you just ask a local bookkeeper. It shouldn't be a big deal, I would imagine. You can't, you couldn't pay me enough to live in the proximity of Times Square. All New Yorkers avoid it like the plague, laugh out loud. Yeah, I can see your point. Yeah, I can see your point. It's not that busy. <laughs> There's a lot of locals where I'm going. It's not like, I, I imagine Times Square is like, I've seen photos and videos, so, yeah. But uh, strangely enough, where I'm going, we're right in the action, but it's very quiet because of the way the building's set up. But anyway, yeah. Okay, let's see. Mr. Steph, I see books are hard to learn from, especially not in my native language, and English is my third language. All right, so then do videos. I'm not saying you have to do books. Some people just prefer books, so I just point out a couple books I would recommend. Of course, one of those recommendations is self-serving, I would have mentioned. Mm. Freelancing or just jump to creating your own product. You jump into creating your own product when you see an opportunity. That means you understand a domain very well. A domain could be a coffee shop. You understand coffee shops. You understand restaurants. You understand butchers. And you understand where a coffee shop might need a certain type of app or a certain type of website or a certain type of product. So that's when you jump into your own product. Freelancing is the easiest way to get into business for yourself because you don't have to have very highly detailed knowledge about a particular domain. So you may start as a freelancer just to get your feet wet with business in general, and then you can get into uh, your own product when you find an opportunity presents itself. Uh, 
Can Angular JavaScript be considered part of web design? Yeah, it's more web development, uh, which means it's more of building an application, whereas web design is more about the aesthetic, um, the aesthetic of uh, of the of, of your website, how it looks, and, uh, and the colors, and uh, uh, Studio Web versus Pluralsight. So Pluralsight is competition in a sense, but it's a different use case. Pluralsight is, a, as far as I understand, it's kind of YouTube behind a paywall. So they curate the material, so it should be higher quality, I would imagine. Um, Studio Web is about, it's interactive, it's uh, every single video lesson, it, your quiz, and you can get help on every single one. And it's concentrated on a philosophy of teaching you foundational skill sets that are universal, whereas Pluralsight is kind of like a, a buffet table. I want to learn a little bit, so I want to learn a little bit, of, learn a little bit of this, as far as I understand. At the end of the day, uh, the quality of the course comes down to the teacher, most first and foremost. Uh, that being said, the Studio Web software, my software, is designed around years and years and years of coding uh, and teaching code and um, getting feedback. And so it's, it's designed around my philosophy of teaching. The app, my app, and my courses are actually designed and integrated together. So they kind of work off of each other. So I designed the app, and after several years of working with it with standard courses, then I created the slew of courses that we have now with an understanding of how the app works and how to best teach. That's why it's very effective. But they both have their places. I always say, do Studio Web, and then you have the whole world open to you. Whether you go to site, YouTube videos, or just the docs or somebody else's uh, tutorials. I hope that makes sense. Um, where do you find freelance jobs online? All websites are saturated. Well, you, it's, that's where reputation comes in. You've got a great reputation. You'll be able to beat the competition. Uh, that's for sure. Um, Alan et Etienne, I, I, I don't know, Etienne, perhaps, Otieno, excuse me. Greetings from Kenya. All right. Um, all right, where we go here? Freelancing question. Thinking about hosting my portfolio site with the three freebie sites through Laravel Forge. Thoughts? Um, why not? Why not? If that works for you, you could do that. I would have to look at, excuse me, I would have to look at what, um, uh, the Laravel Forge freebie sites look like. Look like whatever you do, you don't want to show that you're using. If it's obvious that you're using some freebie service, and you're trying to sell yourself as a professional, it doesn't look good. You know, uh, that's all I have to say about that. You know, uh, especially these days, hosting is so uh, inexpensive. Greetings from Europe. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. French. For clients, it is better HTML, CSS integrated with WordPress or with serverless. It depends. It depends on the situation. I think, you know, small, medium-sized business, um, I think just WordPress will be fine. Depends. It's all project-specific. There's no general rule. I'm not sure what this means. What's behind the curtain? We don't want to know. Uh, destroy that like button after the drums. Exactly, exactly. How we do it? 153, all right. 153 people, 56 likes. Come on, guys, come on. Give me likes. Um, damn, you know how to drum, that's for sure. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks. It only took me 75 years. Um, who are your favorite drummers? Depends on my day, you know. Of course, John Bonham, you know, good for patterns, you know, but Purdy is uh, that's where Bonham got his stuff. I know it's going to sound funny, but I really like um, uh, the drummer for Rolling Stones. It's not about his drumming is complex, but his time is just like, uh, he's, his timing is so, mm, mm, it's so dead on. He, he's, he's really solid that way. Uh, Bonham's timing is great. And he has more complex patterns, John Bottom, you know, you know. But his timing was not as solid as as uh, the Rolling Stones drummer, whose name I forget I forget right now. Watts, I think it is. Yeah. So it depends how I feel, you know. Neil Pert from uh, Rush, Canadian band. 
he's a cool drummer. I know he's super, uh, super liked and he's a great drummer. No, but it, it never did it for me. It's very mechanical. I, I like, I don't know. It depends on, it's, it's, it's a personal thing. So that's it. There's my answer there. Uh, see what Nicola says. Should I bother learning front end frameworks such as React, Angular, or Vue in order to be an efficient freelance developer? No. Those type of frameworks, first, especially the first two, React and Angular, it's more for bigger, medium-sized, larger corporations. Uh, maybe as a contractor, if you're brought in as a contract, they may be doing some React or Angular work. They may want to hire you in that regard. Uh, Vue, you know, it, again, it, on a need to nerve. If I was a freelancer, I wanted to choose a framework, I would choose Vue. I think it's the quickest, the most approachable. All right, let's see what Alash... Abdel Malik says from Algeria. Hello from Algeria. I want to be a good backend developer. I learn Node. I post. I know post delete get. I know some API like one signal. What should I learn next? My dream is to be a good back, good at backend. Well, you gotta you gotta know the the whole web environment. So you know HTTP. You understand the request response cycle, which you do. Um, understand how the the, the pages are painted and rendered for speed and optimization. And uh, of course, you should learn some database stuff. You're going to do the back end. Um, well, you see, yeah, you do. Um, and I would then just go out and do a couple of uh, projects. You seem to know your foundations. Go out, do a couple of projects for free. Jump in and say, I want to learn. I'm going to do stuff for free. Trust me, when you get in there and you do the real thing, it's like a fight. When you want to learn how to fight, get in there and you fight. I used to tell people when I used to train people, I said one sparring session, uh, three rounds is worth six months of training hitting pads. So same thing with coding, by the way. And the good thing about coding is when you get in the, the coding ring for the first time, you won't get your nose broken. So it's fantastic. Since PHP is going to, with just-in-time compiler and a bunch of other stuff, what do you think about the future of PHP? I think the future of PHP is super bright. First of all, I think it's it's such a it's got such a huge user base that it's never going to go anywhere. Not at least 10, 20 years, I would imagine. Um, and because they keep on really working hard to optimize, now it's going JIT. That is PHP already. Last time I checked, runs much faster than Python at runtime, much faster than Ruby. Of course, everything does. Uh, much faster. I'm just kidding about Ruby. Uh, much faster than um, I think. I don't know about JavaScript, but and it's very approachable PHP. And so when they went from PHP 5.6, or it's 5.4, 5.6, and they jumped to 7, it was like a huge speed increase in memory requirement uh, reduction. Like PHP was, when, 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 when it went from 5.6 to 7, it required 50% less memory to get the job done. Now they're going JIT. It's going to even, I don't know what the, imp the uh, improvements are going to be with PHP 8 in terms of the actual numbers, but um, it's going to be substantial. So, no, PHP is going nowhere. I wouldn't, when we read this to the Web 5, uh, we rewrote from scratch. I could have chose any stack, but I went with PHP because I thought long-term it was a good solution. What should I learn at Pluricy or other places to learn data science, the full course? Well, first of all, you have to look at data science jobs and look at what the requirements are. Make sure you don't need to be a, a data scientist with some university degree. Then take it from there. Uh, you're going to learn Jean Talon, don't you? Jean Talon. <laughs> That's the street here in... Uh, Okay, what's this? Multi-language or single-language microservice architecture. Ah. Well, single language is ultimately better, I suppose, but sometimes you might have to do multi-language. I would, you know, I, I vote as a knee as a knee-jerk default to fall back, I go for consistency. But again, if you know Python to learn JavaScript, it's not going to take too much time. Uh, hey, Stefan, advertising revenue and affiliate income, a good business strategy for a website. That's traditional. It works. It's going to take a, a long time. Not a lot. It depends. If you, if you are very good at driving traffic, then that could be a very good revenue. But you have to understand you're going to drive traffic. What I've noticed over the last 
8,000 years of being in business. I've been in business my entire adult life. My last job working for somebody, I was a bouncer. That being said, one of the things I noticed from going from different types of businesses is that there's typically, typically, it takes three to four years before a business reaches a level of profitability, reaches a level of maturity. It's one of those universal principles. And I've done this several times, and it always seems to be the case, and when I talk to people, it always seems to be the case, with the exception of education. I'm in the education business with Studio Web, where I deal with a lot of schools, and that takes seven to 10 years to get up and running. So whatever you decide to do, affiliate marketing and uh, so on, you're going to have to drive traffic, first of all. You need traffic to be able to drive that affiliate uh, message, too. So expect three to, three to four years before it starts giving you a full-time living. But if you start working at it, probably within a few months, you start making some money, at least. And you can slowly transition from your current job to uh, something full-time there. All right. How are we doing for time here? 40 minutes. All right. That's it, guys. It's already too long. I will have to push this to the next day, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and uh, you got to see me drumming, and we're going to, what are we going to do? We're going to end with this video here, uh, since I'll be leaving this place soon, so I think this is apropos. Ciao, guys.